So, if you're looking for a professional cup holder, well, I know a guy named Jimmy, and he loves walking around just holding my cup for me. He can go ahead and just give me the Sprite whenever I need it. He's a great guy. Hey guys, we're back to us by Kai. Kai. Today, we're back once again taking a look at how to create a brushed metal texture. We've done this before in the past, um, and it was a little different. <clears throat> I like this one a lot better. Um, it's much more customizable as well. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of do this over again. So, let's go ahead and get started today. I have a nice little sphere here that you can see. We have just a few nodes, nothing too crazy. I'm going to actually go ahead and unhook everything except for the color ramp. So, that's going to be just a, of course, uh, principal BSDF, specular all the way up, roughness basically on 0.5. We'll just put it back to default. Um, there we go. And then a color ramp, which is shift A, search, and then color ramp. There you go right there. As you can see, I just put this on constant instead of linear. It's on constant right here. Um, and then we just go ahead and went, went ahead and plugged this into the metallic, as you can see. Um, and then what we did after that was I just pulled this back, the the, the white uh, 0.55. Um, and then we just went ahead and added the last three nodes, which is a shift a search noise texture, a shift a search mapping texture, and a shift a search texture coordinate uh, right there. So that's once again shift and a together on the keyboard. Um, we go ahead and put plug the noise texture and you see we get this. We got this little nice thing, which looks really cool. Looks very cool. I like that a lot, actually. So that's really neat. Um, I had the values on uh, 5.7 and 7.3. Um, and then everything else is default, which is 0.5 and 0. Then I had the mapping set into there, into the vector. And then the texture coordinate, the generated, goes into the vector of the mapping. Now, the most important part is, to, of course, go down here and change the scale of the X, Y, and or Z. Now, I have the X. Uh, so I have the uh, X and Z on 1 and the Y on 100, which means it's going to go from left to right. It's going to go back and forth, which is really, really cool stuff. Of course, I have the rotated, this this here, so you can rotate it around. But um, depending on which way you want the uh, brushed texture to go, you can change this um, to a different value. So I'm going to put this back on 1. And we'll put the X value on 100, and you can see now it goes a different direction. If I were to go ahead and unrotate the, the sphere here, you can see it goes up and down now. But if I put this back on uh, 1 and put the, the Y on 100, you can see it goes like from left to right. If I were to go ahead and rotate it upwards like this, so you can see it better. But yeah, you can just have a different size. I just recommend just either doing the on uh, the X value and then just rotating the object to where you want it to be. Obviously like that, you know, it's fine. Um, and just doing that so that's super easy way to do that you can also you can mix them together but i mean it's just not gonna give you a brush texture it'll give you like a different weird like stretch kind of thing but um but yeah so i recommend just having one of them on 100 and the other ones on uh one you can actually probably maybe can you do zero you can do zero they're just closer together as you can see so if i put it on one you can see that they're spread out more which is like that um, but yeah, so you can customize this super easy by just dragging the white or black line over here. And you can have more of it or less of it be um, the brush uh, version. So you can just have a little bit of the little strokes, a little bit of those little slices and cuts, a uh, little bit of that uh, texture in there. Or you can pull it back some more, get a lot of that texture in there, which looks really, really cool. Um, and also, you can switch it to the specular and then have it be a very much less, uh, a much less intense kind of uh, thing. You can see it looks much more subtle now instead of this big like darker line thing um which is also very cool just depending on what you're going for obviously um of course you can change around the uh, values of the scale and the detail and everything else but for the most part the uh the the distortion does some really nice stuff to it that makes it look like it's uh much more detailed and much more um I don't know what's the word of it, HD I don't know but you can see like there we go we have a nice little texture right there which actually kind of like a shirt like some specific types of shirts don't 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 think I'm crazy. It looks like a shirt a little bit. Um, if you take the specular off of it and put the roughness all the way up, it looks like a shirt or like some kind of stretchy sweatpant material. I, I'm not I'm not out here tripping, guys. I swear. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye bye.